Wellness Hour, an in-depth discussion with today's top physicians and medical leaders. And now, your host, Randy Alvarez. You're watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, what you need to know if you're considering dental implants. My first guest is an expert on the topic, Dr. Joel Berger. Dr. Berger, welcome to the program. It's a pleasure to be here. All right, now before we get into today's topic, tell me a little bit about Permodontics, your center. Well, Permodontics is an implant center that is unique in Southern California in that it combines the expertise of a surgeon, okay. a prosthodontist, and a expert lab technician all in one facility. Okay, do you have imaging imaging there as well? Yes, and we have a 3D iCAT imaging system okay. so that we could image in three dimensions. So the typical dental implant patient is what? Well, it could be anybody. It could be the CEO of a company that's missing one or two teeth. It could be a housewife. It could be a retired person. Or it could be a young person that's congenitally missing teeth. So it really includes any patient that are missing teeth. Okay, so with dental implants, why is it that what used to take used to take you nine months, now you can do in a few visits? Well, historically, just as, as you said, dental implants used to take at least six to eight months to restore. Um, the patient would see the surgeon, he would do the surgery, you would wait a period of three to six months, then the implant would be uncovered, wait a month for the gums to heal around the implant, and then the patient would be referred back to the restorative dentist or prosthodontist, and then he would spend a month to two months fabricating the prosthesis that would fit on the dental implants. Okay. Today, uh, in our center, things are sped up, where we can restore full arches immediately. And really? That, yes. Really? That's not an exaggeration? No, immediately. In fact, the day they leave, their teeth are in their mouth, screwed in, and secure. Okay. So, so they call it like teeth in a day or, or same day? I mean, you can do that? That's correct. Like That's in a couple correct. of hours, three hours? In three hours, we could restore a full arch of teeth, and you'd be able to go home and be eating your, a sandwich the next day. Is that right? Now, now for denture wearers, okay, you say that they benefit the most with dental implants. How so? Um, for a number of reasons. One, uh, denture wearers generally adjust their lifestyles to the fact that they're missing their teeth. So okay. it's sort of like somebody that is missing a anatomical structure, which is their teeth, and now they have a mouthful of plastic that isn't attached to anything. So now they have to adjust how they speak, how they smile, and how they chew foods. So their whole life now is adjusted to deal with their disability, which is the loss of their teeth. Okay, okay. By having dentures now that are screwed in and fixed, it gives them the feeling of security. It gives them back their teeth. It makes them whole again because now their body conceives that they have teeth back in so their mouth. So they feel like they're regular teeth? They feel like they have regular teeth in their mouth. Okay, and what about pain though? It seems very painful. Well, you would think that, but in fact, bone doesn't have any pain fibers. The pain fibers are on the outside of the bone, okay. so that what hurts after a tooth extraction or after dental implants is the temporary prosthesis that is sitting on top of the gum. Interesting, Every time interesting. you bite down, you're biting down on the area that had surgery, and that's what hurts because the prosthesis is screwed in to the implants and bone doesn't have any pain fibers on the inside, the patients virtually have little if any pain afterwards. Now you say you're changing people's lives and it's more than just teeth, it's more than just dental implants, elaborate on that. Yeah, well we are changing people's lives because missing a major component of your anatomy results in you changing and adapting to that deformity. Okay. So people that have dentures or are missing multiple teeth or have multiple bad teeth in their mouth tend not to smile because they're embarrassed, Good tend point. Okay. not to chew normally because again they're embarrassed, their personality becomes sort of more dour that because they don't smile, they don't interact with their peers as much, they sort of become more insular. Do the patients tell you this? Oh I mean, yes, you this all the, the time. In fact, let me share with you, okay. this particular patient um, had problems smiling. She would always cover her face. She would become more insular. She didn't socialize as much. Um, she was a professional, and so she had problems interacting with her clients. 
Um, she basically stayed on a soft, almost pureed diet because her partial dentures were hurting her every time she ate hard foods because they moved and put pressure on her gums. So her whole life basically was adapting to this deformity. All right. We basically, in one session, removed all her bad teeth, threw away her partial denture, okay. put in five implants in her upper jaw, five implants in her lower jaw. She went home the same day with her fixed new teeth in her mouth, took, I believe, a couple Tylenol, and basically it changed her life. Now she's smiling more, she's happy, she's in fact Every time she meets somebody, she just flashes her new smile okay. because she wants to share her new personality with people. And they say, you know, when somebody smiles, it brings out the smile in the person they're interacting with. What about the age ranges? I mean, what age ranges? How old can you be to get dental implants? Well, we've had patients in their 80s. Really? And, uh, and as long as they're in reasonably good health, um, they heal perfectly fine and there's there could be candidates and as we get older we actually uh, use our teeth more in terms of the importance of chewing and eating in our daily lives if you notice as we get older basically all our social events are done around food whether it's meeting okay. our relatives whether it's Christmas whether it's Easter all the interactions are around food and so if we're older and have full dentures and can't chew and eat and smile and interact normally, we become socially more insular and we don't go out and we don't interact. Is there such thing as a happy dentureware, by the way? Or maybe I they mean, don't know what they're missing? I mean, it's, it's sort of, you're happy in that you've adjusted to your deformity and you don't know what it's like to have teeth. If there was but, a try-in period, do you think they could, like, like let's say on a Friday, okay, we're doing a try-in period of, do you think anybody could ever go back? No. That, I, that nobody would go back, <laughs> that's for sure. And it's like anybody that has a deformity, you adapt to the deformity and then your life basically goes on and you sort of live with it. But once you've realized, geez, I could have teeth that are now solid, that changes their life. Okay, so her teeth, this woman right here, and this is a beautiful smile by the way, okay? And yeah. I always feel like I could spot a denture you know, 10, right. 10 yards away. Sure. Uh, in fact, when I was in your office, you walked me right into somebody that just had dental implants. Right. And I thought, this is beautiful. It's like cosmetic dentistry. Right. Look like a, look, I mean, this is like a beautiful, beautiful yeah. smile. So you're in on the design to make it look natural. Well, well, that's why we have the prosthodontist, Dr. Ayers, who's an expert in and aesthetics. Him. And we have a master technician, Bruce, who has been doing um, what does aesthetic that mean, dentistry. What do you mean? The technician is Makes the, the person that actually fabricates the prosthesis, fabricates the teeth. Okay. And by having him there, and Bruce interacts with the patient, so he can be involved in choosing the color, the shape of the teeth, um, exactly what type of personality that the that he wants to set up in terms of how the teeth are set up. You've heard the term, oh, your teeth look like chiclets. In other words, yeah, the teeth yeah. are just perfectly aligned one next to each other. Well, it gives the teeth no personality. The personality in the smile is the fact that the teeth aren't perfect. Interesting. That they have yeah. little sort of defects in them, that they're not perfectly lined up, perfectly straight. All right. That's what gives you your personality. And so B Bruce works with the prosthodontist, Dr. Ayers, and the patient in designing exactly the type of smile that they want. So, you know, you said this a little while ago that, that in San Diego alone there's got to be tens of thousands of denture wearers out there, okay? If it's as good as you say it is, you know, eating, chewing, and everything else, why aren't they all doing it? In your take. I mean, what's your take yeah. on that? Well, number one, they don't go to dentists anymore. So typically right. when a denture gets a dent gets a denture the only reason they go back to their dentist if they're having major problems with it and they don't get the information that something else could be done for them so it's an information blackout basically for them they're living with their deformity they don't go back to dentists now even when they go back to dentists a lot of dentists tell them there's nothing that can be done for them do you because, have patients that say that to you? Oh, yes, all the time. I was time. told I couldn't do it. All the time. That nothing can be done because they've lost so much bone 
that the only way they could have implants if the if they have bone grafting and major surgery. And the minute they hear that, they're not interested. So is bone grafting almost a thing of the past now? With the technique that we use, bone grafting is pretty well a thing of the past. So pain is not something that they complain about? That's correct. It's, uh, so that shouldn't hold them back. Right. Age is not an issue. Age is not an issue. Okay. Let's go over the options though. Okay. Right. So the denture wearers, if they're watching this, and I have questions about people also that that, that their mouths are a mess because you say you'd like to see more of those people that you could take care of. But but for the denture wearer, what are their options? Well, their options are, the simplest is two implants and what we call an overdenture. And an overdenture basically attaches to the implants. So on the lower? On the lower. Where do you put them? Where do you put, put them? You put them basically right here, one on this side, one on the right side. Okay, and they're put sort of right at the, where the jaw sort of begins to turn and go posteriorly. And so two are put on the top, if it's an upper or, or if it's and a lower, snap in, snap and out. there are little snap-on attachments that snap the denture in and snap the denture out. Is it strong? I mean, can and, you eat with it? Oh, yeah, and that gives really good stability, but the denture will still rock a little bit. But no more adhesive. Only, you need adhesive in the back? No, no more adhesive. Okay. The problem with that is, though, the little parts wear out because they're just rubber. The snaps. The snaps. Okay. So there is a maintenance issue with them in that every year or so, you have to go back to the dentist and get a new little uh, rubber stopper. You said you like fixed. And I, mean, I like fixed. It doesn't come right. in and out. That's, and that's what everybody wants anyway right. anyway, right? And that's without a doubt the best. And the, the data shows that with fixed, there's almost zero maintenance issues. Teeth that don't come in and out. That's what we're talking about. That's right. About. There's zero maintenance issues. And that's what I really like about it because we want to give patients something that they could forget about. <laughs> you know, it's sort of like that, right. set it and forget it. Okay. It's basically, you forget about that you don't have uh, artificial teeth. They are your teeth, and the beauty so is you brush them, and you you brush them the they... use a water pick, and you feel that they're your teeth, and the best thing about it is they never get decayed ever again. You'll never have to get a filling again. <laughs> and dental implants resist gum disease. Why is that? because the implant is fused directly to the bone. A tooth has a periodontal ligament, which is a connection between the bone and the tooth. And that's a potential space that bacteria could run down and cause the tooth to get loose and fail. Because the implant is fused directly to the bone, there's no potential space for bacteria to get in. So it resists periodontal disease. So Randy, back to your question about why aren't more people doing it, considering the literally the tens of thousands of denture wearers that are in San Diego County. Um, one of the other issues is expense. Because, yeah, people, yeah, okay. because people sometimes think, well, geez, I'm missing 14 teeth or I'm missing 12 teeth. I'm going to have to have 12 implants or yeah. 13 implants. Well, in fact, you don't. Just with two implants, you could secure the denture to have a significant improvement in stability. And with four or five implants, we could restore all your lower teeth or all your upper teeth all at once with screwed in fixed teeth. Okay, I'm in, by the way. I, I want dental implants now. Like you say, you just put them in, you don't have to worry about them after that, right? That's no, exactly no right. Okay, we're gonna take a break. Uh, we come back, more about the process, what they can mm -hmm. expect on day one. The consultations are free? Right. The consultations are completely free, as well as a 3D x-ray. So, so they'll know right then and there if they're candidates. Exactly. Somebody watching this, by the way, in, in, in a nice situation or ideal situation, they're in their 70s, they're watching this, they go to you, how soon can they have a fixed set of teeth in their mouth? Three weeks. Is that right? That's correct. So three weeks from coming into the office, your teeth will be placed in your mouth. Just a couple of visits, three visits? Well, back? it's, it's a one, the initial consultation. Mm -hmm. Then there's a consultation with Dr. Ayers and the, and the lab technician to choose the teeth, the shape, the size, the color. Okay. And then they're scheduled for their procedure. And the procedure is done all in one day where they have the surgical procedure done and the prosthesis is placed in immediately. Are they the sedated, same day. by the way? Are they yes, it's all done in a very safe environment. Our facility um, has a full time anesthesiologist, so it's very oh, no. safe. Um, it's done with them sleepy, monitored just like a hospital, so it's very, very safe. They wake up, they then move on to Dr. Ayers. Dr. Ayers seats 
the prosthesis, screws it in. the teeth, the teeth. Yes. Okay. F screws the teeth in, and then they leave. And they can eat. Right and they away. can eat. The next day, they can have a sandwich. All right. Now, when I see videos on the internet, by the way, of people after the procedure biting into apples, I mean, is that an exaggeration? I mean, could you do that? You could do that. We don't recommend don't it recommend. initially, but you could do that. Typically, uh, we like them to stay on a fairly soft diet for the first month. Yeah. And then they could pretty well eat apples and. So they brag well you guys and tell you their what they ate stories, you know? Oh, all yeah. the time, all the time. In fact, we had one patient that this changed her life so much that she got married. Really? So we have patients, Randy, that have never told their spouse that they have dentures or really? that they have partial dentures. They hide like it from them. it's a secret them. from it's your spouse. It's a big secret, right, Is because they're right? so embarrassed. Because if you have an upper denture, for instance, when you take that upper denture out, you age 15 to 20 years immediately. Yeah, I immediately. agree with that. Okay, yeah, I've seen and that. So, um, the spouse doesn't want to age 15 to 20 years in front of their significant other immediately. So they never know. It's a big secret. You know, 70 is very young today in San Diego. Okay. And they're dating. They're on Match.com, things like that. So nobody should be wearing dentures. When you hear terms, no more dentures. Exactly. Is that the way how you feel? Exactly. Dentures actually um, do more damage than good. And so that we would like the denture wearers to never wear another denture because the denture accelerates bone loss from the pressure of the denture and for it being under pressure every time we swallow our teeth have to come together and so this constant pressure causes the bone to shrink the more the bone shrinks the more the corners of the lips corners of the mouth sink in so dental implants and, stop that because and of the dental floor. implants stop all that. Now my mother, and you know, and I've told this to other people that that uh, you know, 74 years old, and she says, well, and she's been in denture since she was 28, and her medical doctor said, you probably don't have enough bone to do it. Do you disagree with that? I mean, a oh. healthy person, that's not too old then. No, definitely, and that's Even if you've been in dentures that long. Oh, that's correct, and that's sort of a major misconception that. Uh, because you've been in dentures for a long period of time that you don't have enough bone for dental implants. The new techniques that we're using, again with the use of stereolithic models, we don't put in implants straight up and down. We angle them. And so by angling them, we're taking advantage of the bone on a horizontal, not just a vertical. Interesting. You see, so that's how we get away from bone grafting, by putting them in more horizontally than vertically. You love dental implants. You like the now look, you're you're a medical doctor, cranial facial fellowship. Why dental implants? Why do you like this? Why why focus on this? Well I'm um, gonna ask you that. It's because the instantaneous nature of changing somebody's life immediately is is, is is the major gratification. So it's a passion almost of both myself and Dr. Ayers because everything I've done in surgery up to now is the patients are miserable, they're swollen, they're sore, there's a lot of hand holding, there's a lot of sort of don't worry, you're gonna get better, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera, all okay? Right. And um, with, with this technique that we've developed, happy. they're happy people. The patients at the end of the procedure have this big smile on their face <laughs> and every single one has that. And that's so gratifying and uh, so uh, reassuring that we're doing the right thing. Okay, we're going to take yeah. a quick break. We come back. Uh, you brought more photos and more about the process. You're watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. What you need to know about dental implants. We'll be right back. You're watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, what you need to know if you're considering dental implants and especially if you have a loose-fitting denture. Our guest is an expert on the topic. Uh, board certified oral surgeon, Dr. Berger. Okay. You know, one of the things that, you know, we were talking on the pre-production meeting on the telephone and you said, you know, we want to emphasize speed uh, for the procedure. That's what great. about, okay, so when you say speed, what do you mean? Well, what I mean is that the patients don't have to go to two different facilities to get things done, which takes a lot of time. Okay. And the fact that they get their teeth put in immediately, not a week or two weeks or three weeks or four to five months later, where you could have it done immediately. All right. Okay. You have photos, and we're yeah, running so out this, of time. This, what is is, this? this is an example. So this individual had problems all his life wearing dentures and with 
pain sensitivity on his remaining teeth. So he had partial dentures, which were giving him problems, as well as the remaining teeth that he had were constantly giving him problems with difficulty in drinking cold fluids would hurt. Uh, right. Biting down on hard foods would hurt. He would have trouble smiling. And you could see from this picture that even though he's smiling, he doesn't look happy. There's something Good here where okay, so he doesn't right. look happy. All right. Here he is literally immediately the same day after he had a surgery. Okay. okay. And look at his smile. And there you can <laughs> like see he's smile. smiling. Yeah. And his face looks happy. And so that's so what his options were what? Dentures? His options were were dentures, partial dentures, or getting the remaining few teeth that he had left out and going to a full denture. Okay. So is it men and women? Is it more women? No, it's in? both men and women. We're about 50-50. Now, now, the other category, because you said, Randy, it's tough to get these people in. The people that they're holding on to their teeth. Right. What do you mean by that? Yeah, well, what I mean by that is there are, pa there are patients out there um, whose teeth are breaking down. They've had root canals. They've had crowns. And every couple of years, it's another root canal, another crown, more decay. And finally, these people just stop going to the dentist because it's sort of good money after bad, and they're not seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. For these folks, our implant center is really their solution because we can eliminate their teeth and then give them immediately new teeth. But what if their gums are bad? I heard that. They said, you know, Randy, I don't know. You know, I told them I'm going to interview you. Problem is, gums are bad. Yeah, well, the gums are bad because of the teeth that are in the bone. So once you eliminate oh, the teeth, okay. there's no more bad gums. So that the gum disease is caused by the teeth, not by the gums. So when you extract the teeth, like the, is, is it an infection? Is that, is that a correct way to say it? That's that correct. goes away? That immediately. That goes away. Now you brought photos. Let me see those yeah. photos because, you know, I looked at those photos at the break. I said, this has got to be unusual. What are we looking at there? Well, we're looking at a number of patients, all with different problems, that came to our center and had the solution. And the solution was either put in implants and replace all their teeth with a fixed prosthesis, screwed in. Okay. Or removing their existing few teeth and again replacing them immediately with a fixed prosthesis. But so, in this case though, yes, that's got to be unusual. Oh no, that's the more common situation really? where a patient... But is, you don't see that. I mean, I don't... See. Well, you don't see it because they're hiding it because they don't go to the dentist anymore. They're wearing a partial denture. Or they don't smile. And they don't smile. Okay. And so it's only when they take their partial prosthesis out oh that you see what's left. And these people can have these badly broken down teeth removed and literally instantaneously get a fixed prosthesis That's a nice put in. smile after and that. And you can see the nice pretty smile afterwards. What's going on with this guy? And this is the same type of situation where he had a bunch of failing teeth bad periodontal disease. So they disease, had to go. It was determined. Bad to breath. Go. The teeth had to go. He didn't want to lose his teeth because even bad teeth are better than dentures. <laughs> so Do they say that? I mean, are, are people like that? Where they oh, hold on to bad teeth? There is no question. We've had celebrities that have held on to two or three teeth with a denture because they were fearful of having dental implants. So in this individual, we took his teeth out Immediately, we placed the implants in and gave him his fixed prosthesis that you could see in that photo. It's very nice. Now, can it be emotional? I mean, you know, when they look at their teeth for the first time, you know, when, they, when you put the mirror in front of their face. Well, that's when we get that big, broad smile. Okay. Do, do, do they get emotional, though, sometimes? Uh, some of the patients do, but basically, they just have this big, broad smile, and they can't stop smiling <laughs> because they're just amazed you showed me that a they video. have their teeth. Uh, when I was at your center, this woman was just uh, so so happy. Right, exactly. To get her so it's back. an expression of just joy that now they have something that they've always longed to have back, which is a pretty smile and something that feels secure and solid. Now, is this one of those things? I mean, did they actually say, "I should have done this years ago"? Oh, every single one. Do they really every say that? single one says, "Why did I wait so long?" <laughs> Do they really say yeah, that? Yeah, every single one, because. They're fearful that it's going to be painful, that it's going to be sore, that it's going to take a long time. And, they real, and then suddenly they realize, geez, I came in four hours later, I'm done. Is that right? And, and, and even for the highly anxious patient? 
Oh, that's correct. You have sed sedation, so it's not like. I mean, uh, I mean, they're sleepy. They, the the hard part, which is the surgery, they're uh, basically totally asleep. And it's all done on a computer. That's right. Guided surgery. That's correct. Everything is figured out on stereolithic models, with guided. Um, prostheses so that the guides allow us to put the implants in exactly where their bone is. Final me we're out of time, by the way. Okay. Final message. Uh, denture wear, a person, maybe they've been told their teeth have to go, uh, but for whatever reason, maybe they're skeptical, they're putting it off, they're afraid. What do you say to them? I say, come for a free consultation, check out our center, speak to Dr. Ayers, myself, or even speak to some of our patients that you'll see in the facility. And they're all on their website. These, these pictures are on your website. That's correct. You have information about dental implants there. That's correct. And you want to be the premier center, period. We feel we are. You are. All right. I want to thank you for coming on the show. Good job. You've been watching the Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. If you would like to see this interview again online, visit our website at wellnesshour.com. For now, I wish you good health. Thanks for watching the Wellness Hour. The leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.